This is my SD card based storage solution for the NASCON computers. This version's on a NASCON 1. It connects through this cable to the cassette interface on the NASCON and it connects through these two dual inline headers down onto the PIO sockets of the NASCON and that provides that mechanical stability as well. On this NASCON 1, there is a few extra wire adds you have to connect to the serial connector. There's a version for the NASCON 2. It's electrically the same, but the connectors are different. In this case, use flying leads um, to connect to the serial connector and the PIO connector on the NASCON 2. On the NASCON 2, there are no wire adds or hardware mods required at all. All of the code for this board and the uh, PCB designs and schematics, they're all on my GitHub. There's a 24-page uh, manual telling you everything that you can do. And I'll show you some of those things now. So let's power it up. So when this board starts up, it's issued a read, NASIS has issued a read command, and the expansion board has squirted in on the serial line as though it was coming in from the cassette interface, a small program, which it has now executed. So we have a little command prompt here, and this is a command loop, and all that this command loop is doing is receiving a command typed in from the NASCOM keyboard, sending it across the serial interface to the expansion board. So what we have to do is to tell the board which file we want it to send in response to a read command or in the case of a write command what file name to use when we store the file on the SD card. SD card format is uh, FAT so you can modify it using pretty much any uh, computer windows Linux, Apple. So there are three file systems supported on this board. The first one is a very small file system within the flash memory of the Arduino. And so we can say directory of flash, and here are the programs that are stored there. The next file system is on the SD card as raw files. We can say directory of SD card, and we can see the images there. And the third file system is uh, disk images sitting on the SD card, which we can mount and then read from. We can read images from within that those um, disk images. So we can load a program by telling using this interface to tell the expansion card which program we want to load. So we'll say. Um, I want to read from flash program lollipop. Now we quit out of the command loop. Now that is queued up so that the next time we issue a read command from NASIS, we will get the program that we just specified. It loads in just like any other loader from cassette. It's fairly slow. There's no special code. There's, there's no um, special code executing on the NASCON now, this is purely the NASSIS monitor. And there we've automatically started the program and we're running this NASCON Classic. So this NASCON one is expanded, as you can probably see it's got a 60k of memory, so it's got a full address space of RAM, but it doesn't have any ROM on it, so for example it doesn't have ROM basic, but we could very easily load ROM basic using exactly the same process as I showed here, except it's fairly slow. As you can see, the serial interface, the cassette interface is quite slow. So now we're going to use the um, parallel interface, which gives us a much higher bandwidth. So let's start this off again. So 
So to do that, we're going to load a bootstrap program called Disk Boot. So we use the serial interface, the cassette interface, to load a piece of code that knows how to talk to the expansion board through the parallel interface. So now we'll read that program, disk boot, and execute it automatically. And now we're running Polydos. So this is a modified, what, what happened is we loaded the Polydos boot ROM into the address space of the NASCOM and also the basic ROM into the address space of the NASCOM. This version of the Polydos ROM has been modified to talk across the PIO connection instead of to talk instead of talking to a floppy disk controller. Now we have a number of images sitting on the SD card, each of which are um, scrapes of floppy disk images. So they're virtual floppy disk images. We can look at them. Drive zero, drive one, drive two. Drive three. And there's also a utility which allows us to associate any disk image that's on the SD card with one of these four drives. So we can virtually change the disk that's on each of these four virtual drives. So if we look back on drive zero, um, Oh, we can start up basic. So here we are. Now we're in Polydos extended NASCOM basic. Can write a program. Save it. Again, okay. Now, when I look on the disk, I can see here's the program I just saved. If I execute that program directly from the command line, it will load the program and basic and start and run it all in one go. That's just a standard feature of Polydos. There we are. Obviously we can run any of the other basic programs that are on here or on the other drives. This is non-interactive computing at its best. As well as running Polydos, you can also run NASDOS, or you can use the SD boot mechanism to directly pull in any binary images. So for example,
this and now it looks as though nothing's happened but if I do a single step now instead of getting the one line display I get a detailed dump from um, NASCOM disk debug. Okay if you want more information then check out the manual or go take a look at the code on github. Thanks, bye!